Jake Roberts is in the snake pit. Oh, my God. This turned the show around. <laughs> I guess. So the set is empty. We hear his voice. And eventually he enters and says, I am late because I am in charge. I am the one who decides when I come and enter here in the theater of the cruel but fair. Now my guest is waiting for me to say his name. But it's the junkyard dog. It turns out he's he ain't waiting. He walks on in. He's eyeballing Damien. Jake asks, what do you got that chain for? And junkyard dog says, my mama didn't raise no fool. I brought this for Damien. I thought, so So in case the python attacks you, you're going to beat it up with a chain. Yeah. This is your yeah. plan. Hey, you got to have something. So then Jake, here in 1986, pokes his finger in JYD's chest and says, I know you people are superstitious and scared of ghosts, but this is just a snake. And uh, he says, bring your... Jake says to JYD, if we ever meet in the ring, bring your song, bring your lyrics, I'm going to make you sing. And JYD says, I'm not making this up. I'm only made to do two things. Stay black and die. He promises Damien won't go to heaven. And it just sort of ends. You didn't even write down the best part. Okay. Where Jake decides to insult him. And he says something like, if if there were a judge, a jury, and an executioner trying you oh. on charges of being a good wrestler, yes, they would kill an innocent man. I think that's what the joke was supposed to be. Something like that, yes. But Jake fucked it up. Yeah. And it just like, if it's Jake Roberts, he fucked it up. And then I didn't write it down. But Junkyard Dog, I don't even know what he said. He said something like... I can't believe I didn't write this down. That's weird. He goes, if... It was something like... If your brain was made out of cotton... Oh, boy. There wouldn't even be enough to make something. I don't... I, I rewound it over that, that, and over. That did happen. I was like, what in the fuck? And you know what I thought, too, is like... It's like, it's like kind of like Roddy. I think the thing that people love about Roddy Piper is not what he says, but it's his delivery. Because if you actually listen to what he says, 99% of the time it's like, what in the fuck is this guy even talking about? And with Junkyard Dog, legitimately, I didn't have any idea what in the fuck he was talking about. I rewound it over and over to try and figure out what is he saying here? I got the brain made out of cotton, but after that I'm lost. But his delivery was so good in this this segment, I could not take my eyes off him. And I just I rewound it twice just to listen to JYD. Because he didn't really say anything of value, but he's he's like he's got this charisma and he's got this delivery that you're just like, I got it, dog. And then he then Jake's all angry that he made this whatever joke about him that I didn't understand. And uh, once again, it was the same thing on the snake pit. Bring out a baby face. You try to make fun of them. They turn the tables on Jake, and Jake gets all angry. And then JYD leaves with his head held high, presumably just to set up matches on the road or whatever. But uh, I liked it. Kind of. Sika versus Jose Luis Rivera. And as always, the best part of the show is our hero, the wizard. Oh, man, I need an inset promo. Here's another one. He did this inset promo, and I was like, what are you talking about, brother? I What in the fuck are you talking about? I should go but back. But he delivered it so well. <laughs> I was like, do you remember? You got, did you guys even watch that segment on Raw? I did not know. You didn't I watch did, it? Actually. It, was actually, it was actually phenomenal. But one of the things that Rock says is he goes, uh, you know, your mother, Cody, was at ringside, and she was very proud of you. And he says, uh, and you know, your daddy up in heaven, he was very proud of you as well. And then he says, I wonder if my daddy was proud of me for what I did to you. And he says, I don't care. <laughs> but the point is, do you know who was proud of Roman Reigns? The wizard! That is what the weekend was missing. The wizard. God bless Curtis Iakea. If only he could have been there for this past weekend. 
I need to go back and track these promos. How often am I laughing out loud before he finishes his first syllable? Every single time. His Every word, time. His first word was 2,000. By the time Excuse me. No, the- no, I must correct you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. First of yes. all, the first syllable is two, and I'm, I'm dying. I'm howling with laughter. Yes. By the W, I'm laughing. Yes, yes. But it's 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 not 2,000, Craig. It's 200 million oh. People, I apologize. <laughs> That's how many people are watching him here on Wrestling Challenge. Two hundred million people. I'm not even sure there were two hundred million people in America in 1986. I'm going to go back and find out. Actually, okay. They wonder what the mighty Sika's appetite consists of. It is the herbs I hold in Shar Khan's tooth. And the insect closes. <laughs> Gorilla does this. Huh. Shark Khan's tooth, you say. <laughs> dying. Well, the, I'm the dying with laughter. Hey, how about that? 240 million people in the U.S. in 1986. Every <laughs> single one of them was watching this promo. So the thing he wears around his neck, it's like a necklace, but it's it's a exaggerated tooth. Is that what? That's what I assume that's Shark Khan's tooth. That's, okay. Yeah, that's Shark Khan's tooth. So it's, given to him by the Grand Wizard. It's just a stash box. Yes, that's where he keeps his herbs. Okay. Which, actually, now that I say it out loud, it's it possible. It makes a lot of sense, actually. So I'm assuming, this, is, of course, is 86. This is the very, very end of Sika's career here. He's a huge star in the early 80s and 70s. I'm assuming that if we went back and watched those matches, he would do something. Because, man, this is a squash match, and he's just chin-locking the guy forever. Mm-hmm. He finally wins with a running headbutt. Yeah. Roman Reigns. One year old. Yes. During this match. Yeah. His father out there vigorously holding this man's chin. <laughs> and it's not even vigorous. He holds his chin like yeah. this. Gently. This delicately. Is how chin lock. Yep. For a long, long time. A I believe until Roman started time. training is when he released the chin lock. I, I think he may have, yeah. Yeah. The British Bulldogs are outside of Matilda. Bobby Heenan comes up and says, hey, what's that? They say, it's a bulldog. Want a petter? He says, oh, God, no. And he runs away. I'm not making much up there. That's pretty much how it mm-hmm. went down. Uh, I believe the T-shirt the British Bulldogs were wearing here was the first piece of wrestling merchandise I owned. Same. Yeah. Ruby, excuse me, Rudy Diamond. Ruby Diamond would be even better. Rudy Diamond and Steve Regal versus the British Bulldogs. I need to watch more Steve Regal. Uh-huh. He did a great Dude, squash. we saw this guy on TV like uh, three weeks, weeks ago or whatever. And he was awesome there. Fucking great yeah. guy. He's awesome here. Yeah. And he comes out there and he's got his receding hairline and the purple sequined bandana over it. And by 1980s juiced up standards, he's like incredibly skinny, like anorexic skinny. But God damn, this guy could work. Mm-hmm. He's awesome. They do some stuff. Davey Boy hits his power slam on Diamond. When Regal comes in to rake at the pin... Davey Boy hurks him up, and Dynamite does the bit where he jumps off the top rope, jumps off of Regal's back, and makes the cover. And all Regal can do is kick and wriggle and complain. <laughs> Resnick interview Slick. Brings in Sheik and Volkov, and I'm managing these two. I'm managing Hercules. I'm managing Butch Reed. He's put, putting them all over, and just looking at this. And, dude, Nikolai Volkov was such a, just a tank of a human being. Mm-hmm. Just a thick... Bro, <laughs> it's like he he had that Jason Kelsey physique. We're like, he has never done a crunch in his life, but he will throw you from hither and yon. And there, sooner or later, the Bulldogs have to sign papers and face us. We are the best from New York to L.A., and they flex as usual. Next week on the show, Bob Orton and Don Morocco in tag team action. I always like they have to get all of Bob's nicknames in there: Ace Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Hillbilly Jim will be in action, and the brain promises a surprise. Butch Reed and Slick will be here. Kamala will be here. And in a segment that I am tempted to go watch right now, because I don't think I can wait seven more days, the machines go car shopping. (laughs) Yeah. I I hope they buy car machine. (laughs) Yes. Get a giant version that mass stretched across the headlights yes. and the grill. Oh, yes. That'd be amazing. Oh, God. And then, of course, the special musical review. Always a highlight. 
Yes, yeah, a special musical review. It's fun. So this didn't have any buddy of note against somebody of note. No. Like this did not have a, a main event this week. I'm no, almost positive it, that they were advertising guys last week who were not here. Like I think they advertised Money and Stud and they were not on the show. Well, I can uh, go back did. and check. Don't you have notes? I erased them. Why the um, hell don't you just do everything in Google Drive and just keep your notes forever? Because then I have I can then I can't find the stuff I'm looking for. I, I have dude, I have enough trouble organizing. It's searchable. I have enough trouble finding stuff anyway. Oh my god. How anyway, old are you? Well fuck, you got notes, then you read them. Well, I didn't write notes down. Aha. They're up here. Apparently not, because you don't know. Anyway, Craig, what? I was talking to Craig. I just thought that, you know, there's usually at the very least, like the moon dogs. Yeah. There was they were they were all squash matches. They were all job. We guys saw Coco some... Beware. No, 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 no. He was wrestling Lombardi. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes, they there were was all squash matches. Brooklyn Brawler, brother. Oh, the Hall of Famer. Uh, sure. Um, but no, there was there was no Good team against another good team. No, or it was no big match was, this week. It was. Just I think you're underrating guys. Mr. Electricity Steve Regal. <laughs> well, he had a partner as a problem. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. It was definitely not Mr. Electricity. No. Mm. No, no. Anyway, this is well, the worst of the seven we've watched. Yeah. <laughs> know, and last one was the best. We yeah. thought I turned a corner. Oh, well. Well, you know, there's always next week when those machines go car shopping. Yeah. 1950 pop culture quiz. The blank moved from New York to San Francisco in Giants. 1957. Holy sh... <laughs> a sports question? A sports ball question. Brian got it right. Do you know what sport? Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> the blank corporation introduced jukeboxes that could play 45 MP. RCA. Wait a minute. i got to see if I have the answer. Hound a dog. Who? No, that's the wrong question. Hound Dog. It's an Elvis Presley song. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Thank God we did this. <laughs> well, what's the answer? What was the question? <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.